that I was in that condition. But the truth of the matter tonight, church, is sometimes you get so burdened down and all of the cares of life and the things that you're worrying about has got you so burdened down that you can't sleep at night. And it just it robs the joy of the daylight. And when you get in that shape, man, you need somebody to be a shining light. You really do. You need somebody to just light the path before you. You need somebody to lean on them. Somebody to help you. Man, when you can't make heads or tails out of it and, and you just don't have a clue and, you, and you're worried and fretted over things that you, you're not, you know you're not going to be able to change them anyway, but human nature is, well, we're going to worry. You know, I can tell you mama's in here not to worry about your children, but I know, I can tell you it's sin, but it ain't going to change the fact that you, mama, you're going to worry over your kids. But sometimes if we're not careful, all those worries just mount up. Hello? Amen. You know, Brother Doug is, is well, he's kind of my baby brother by a couple months. <laughs> Amen. But this month I'll be 52 and in November Brother Doug will be 52. And with the condition of the economy being the way that it is, you know, God's been good and He's talked about the job that we prayed for and God gave Him and never filled out an application. And man, JT's been good to Him and, and all. JT's a lost man. And when push comes to shove, JT is going to naturally choose his children or his grandchildren over Brother Doug. Brother Mike, you're older than I am. And you're kind of in the same position. I mean, neither one of you two, as well as myself, we're not at an age that we'd like to go looking for a new job tomorrow. Hello? I mean, look, there's a lot of young guys that I can outwork. There's a lot of these young guys that I could stay in a ditch all day using a shovel for eight hours and they won't make it too. But the fact of the matter is, when that boss is looking at an 18-year-old as opposed to a 52-year-old to get out there with a shovel and a mattock and a pick, he's going to choose that 18-year-old any day of the week. Experience doesn't matter in some things. They look at the age. And they might even say, well, I'm going to work both of y'all tomorrow. And man, after three hours, that 18 year old, he might be, oh, God, I'm not make it throughout the rest of the day. And I'm, you know, I'm still good at the end of the day. I'll go home, rub on some Ben Gay, take a few aspirin. Well, I can't take aspirin, but I'll take some Advil. And I'll hurt when I get up the next morning to be back on the job. But then the boss will be standing there thinking, hmm, he can build his way up into it. He's just 18 years old. He's 52. and by lunchtime, he might have a cardiac arrest. The older it gets, you start thinking about things you didn't think about, and if you're not real easy, they'll become worries. And there'll be things that you'll worry about when you go to bed at night. And you won't sleep. And then the next day when you get up, and you'll carry that to the prayer closet and you just won't have the fellowship in the prayer closet and you try to read the Word of God. And man, it'll just be a closed book and you'll go through the day and say, Preacher, I never did that. Don't never say never. Amen. 
Because you don't know what tomorrow's going to be in your life. Amen. Amen. Some of you are sitting here tonight and look, you you don't worry about some of the things that, that, that I think about. I'm not going to say that I worry about them because I try not to worry about them, but I don't have health insurance. I don't qualify for Medicaid. I make too much money. And I own too many vehicles. And I own too much property. So for me to qualify for Medicaid, I'd have to quit being your pastor or either start doing it for free. And I'd have to sell part of my vehicles. And I'd have to sell off my property. Basically, I'd have to get rid of the inheritance that I have for my children. If something major was to happen to me or to mom. So I, I do think, I, I am trying, Brother Doug, to be conscious when I want to go for the first bowl of ice cream. I started thinking about these things because I don't want to be a burden on my wife. I don't want to become a burden on the church. I don't want to be a burden on my kids. But you know that possibility is there. When you've got a good health insurance plan and man, you don't pay but $4 for all of your medications, whereas I would have to pay $90 for a prescription that you have to pay $4 for. If you're not careful, you'll get in a comfort zone that you don't need to be in. Amen. Amen. Hello? Amen. What I'm trying to get you to see tonight is every individual in this congregation tonight has got things that can become worrisome burdens in your life. And from time to time, the very best that you do for them not to, man, they're just going to creep up out of nowhere. There's going to be times, Brother Mike, when you think you've got this thing settled in your heart and it's not ever going to be an issue again. But then out of nowhere, man, there it is again. Well, I'm telling you, in times like that, you need somebody to be alive in life. Am I telling you the truth? Amen. Amen. Look, hey, fellas, as long as your wives are healthy, man, and, and, you know, no scares at the doctor's office, you don't worry about it. But you wait. You wait till the first time that it's not a letter that comes in the mail after they've gone and had their mammogram to tell them that everything was all right, but the day after they've gone, it's the doctor calling. Yes. Man, I'm telling you, everything changes. Yes, sir. And it changes in a hurry. And boy, it can change in such a hurry that it just gets your heart so weighted down. And, and man, you're just fretting and worrying. Now all of a sudden, man, insurance is not even eight hey, years. Well, I'm glad I got well, it ain't gonna matter whether you've got it or not when you start thinking about the next step or you know, hello? Amen. Try. I don't know whether Brother Jim had insurance with Matty or not, but I know Brother Mike did with Miss Sharon. And hey. Paying the bills brings no comfort when you're looking at your spouse suffering. You can ask Tate Miss Polly back there. It would have been a whole lot easier on them and Kim and Gwen if Matthew had been healthy when he was born than to receive all the financial help that's come in all of these years. It's taken a toll on that family's life. It does. What do they need? 
every day of their life, they need somebody to be alive. No. Y'all follow me here? Amen. Yeah. I'll give you the last one. I've actually got 14 wrote down, and I'm not going to preach them all to you, but here's a pretty good one. When it feels like you've jumped into the great unknown, you ever feel that way? I know some of us have. Sometimes it feels like God's throwing us off into the great unknown. <laughs> Doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. What do we need? We let we need somebody to be what God wants them to be. Let their light so shine for men that they'll see your good works. That they'll see your good works. You know, seeing is believing. Am I right? Seeing is believing. Right? Seeing is believing. You know, I love my brother, but he still has to come to, this, to grips with this thing about mom. He, he just, he, he, he ain't got it yet. Now, I'm here to tell you tonight, when he's going to get it, is when I've prayed the prayer in the graveyard, and the undertakers start lowering that casket. Then when they reach up there and take that shovel, throw that first shovel of dirt on top of that casket, my brother's finally going to get it. When my grandfather died, my papa, all my dad's dad, the one that I was closest to, I never got it, really got it, until the night that we went to the funeral home and I stood in that line and made my way around. And mom and dad and dad's other brothers and the, and the, and the adults were already up to head of the casket, but I was in line with, with the other children. And Brother Mike, I never, it, I never got it until it came my turn to stop in front of that open casket and I looked down there and I saw my back on. Then I got it. And I ran as hard as I could out the front door of the funeral home. And I collapsed on the sidewalk on the curb next to the highway. And one of my cousins, instead of staying in line and going on around, it wasn't his grandfather, he was a cousin on my mom's side. Brother Mike, he come, stepped out of line, didn't put on a show. Left his wife. Stepped out of line. Came out and sat down on the curb beside me. Wrapped his arms around me. Pulled my face on his shoulder. As I cried on his shoulder, he cried on mine. He was my life. 